Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. In this video, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. I'm going to move a picture around the screen with a joystick. It's going to involve a little bit level math. It's going to have multiple timers. It should be a little bit of fun. It even gets into the pre and post initialization pages or tabs. Um, I found something with that too. So this is the layout of the display. I'm going to have these four timer buttons. I'll go over that code a little bit later. I'm going to have these number fields down here and they're going to show which direction the joystick wants to move the picture. So if this one up here is a one, it's going to want to move it up, down, right and left. And there's no code associated with any of these or the picture. They'll all be operated by the timers. And so the image is a 20 by 20 image. So it's only it's a small image and it's the Cheap Controls logo. And I'm going to have it move across the screen. So I'm going to have to keep that 20 in perspective when I decide on some things because it's pointing to the upper leftmost corner whenever you're looking at the location of the image. Now we're going to start because we need to configure the GFIO, the GFPIO pins, and we're going to do that in this pre-initialize screen. I'm going to be using the last four pins, five, six, seven, and eight, and they're numbered four, five, six, and seven. But whenever I'm using the pins, since I use one of these little boards I built, I try to go ahead and initialize the pins I'm not using so they're not just floating. So I'm going to set the first four pins to be outputs and I'm going to shut them off. And that's what the CFGPIO is and then the, setting the PIO 0 to 0. And I do that for the first four pins. And then after I initialize the four output pins, I'm going to initialize the four input pins. And then I have pin 5 is set to go up, 6 will be down. 7 will be right and 8 will be left. At least I hope that's how I have it. And then finally what I'm going to do, because I want to show this as it moves across the screen, I want to show it inside a box. And so I'm going to draw this box. And I, I don't know if you're not familiar with the draw command. I have a video, I think I did a long time ago on that. I specifically set this up in the pre-initialize and so I'm going to show you this in debug. Now it's not going to do anything at this point, but you'll notice that I didn't get the box. And that's because I did it in the pre-initialize. And for a long time, I've been trying to figure out what you can do where. And I even asked Nexion support a long time ago, but I, I really didn't get an answer from them. And now I've figured out one thing. So now I've moved the code over to the post initialize and I'm going to run it in debug again. And you can see now I get that red box. So now when I first start, I'm going to let it go beyond the red box just to show you some other things. But eventually we want to keep it within this red box or like if it were to go all the way to the left here, we want it to maybe reappear here on the right. And we're going to do a couple different scenarios with that. And we're going to use the timer in combination with the number fields to move the picture field. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the value of the PIO pins and we're going to store them into these number fields. I'm going to upload it to the screen, to the actual screen at this point, because there is a problem doing this that we'll need to fix. So I have this joystick I bought a long time ago, and maybe that's why I'm doing this video, but I also thought it would be fun. I'm tying the joystick into this little board I have. It has four relay outputs, but it has four pins, header pins for inputs, and they're down here. And I've just tied that over, and then there's a ground pin. The four inputs are going to be floating high. So what you'll see when I turn the timer on is you're going to see these all go to one. And now as I move the joystick around, you'll see the numbers change.
But that's only going to happen when the timer is enabled. If I disable the timer, then it's no longer checking for that state of those PIO pins. But what I want to do is I want to use these numbers to move the image. So I need them to be 1 when, when they're active and 0 when they're inactive. So we're going to invert the numbers. And you can do that by using the caret symbol and a 1. And what this does is it uses a bit mask. And this is where I'd like some feedback in the comments. If people would like me to go into more detail on how to use this bit mask to flip these, invert these numbers, because you can invert more than just a single number. But if you use the, the caret symbol in a 1, it will change the 1 to a 0 and a 0 to a 1. Now, if PIO 4 was equal to anything else, it would, be, it would act really strange. But for this case, it's going to work out great because PIO 4, 5, 6, and 7 are going to be a 0 or they're going to be a 1. So I'm just going to put that caret symbol in a 1, and wherever it was a 1, it's going to be a 0, and wherever it was a 0, it'll be a 1. I'm going to upload this again, and you'll see that it's working the opposite. So I'll have to activate the timer. And now it goes 1. Now it's doing what we want it to do. Now we just have to make it move the picture. To move the picture, we're going to use the picture attributes of y and x. So y is the up and down position, and x is the left and right position. So if n0, which is up, is pressed or is high, then we need to subtract from the y coordinate so that it goes up. It sounds kind of backwards because we want it to go up, which 0 is at the top of the screen, and then a larger number is at the bottom. So if we want it to go down, which would be the case of n1, then we would add 1 to y. So if this is sitting at 1, we're going to continually go down. And the minute we release the joystick, it'll just sit. Because it'll add whatever n1 is no matter what, or n0 is no matter what, but if it's 0, it's not going to move. And so the same thing with x. If we want x to go to the left, we have to subtract 1. And if we want it to go to the right, we have to add 1. Now, I don't have any contingencies on this, so if we run it right now, it'll just run right off the screen. But I, I want to show you it in this state so you can see what kind of happens. You can see that it moves kind of slow. But you can also see that it breaks the red line once it goes through it, and it doesn't repaint it which is kind of interesting. And then it also hides underneath the other objects on the screen. And the reason that it hides it behind the objects is there's a hierarchy of how you place them. And I place the picture first. So it has an ID of one. So it's going to be behind the other IDs. So this timer zero has an ID of six, so it would be behind it. So if I want this picture to be in front of everything, I select it and I hit this button up here, bring to top. And it's going to change the ID. So now this has priority over everything. But let's say I go up to this timer zero and I raise it to the top. Now it has ID of 13 and this has ID of 12. Now, I didn't realize that bringing to the top did this until I made this video. But I can see some good implications for this, because sometimes you want to query objects based on ID, and sometimes you want them in a certain order. Well, you can use this button to put them in whatever order you want. And that's kind of nice to know. You just have to pay attention to the order that you want and click them in, the, in that correct order. But outside of this video, I can see possibly making another video where I query things based on ID, and this would be a way to set them in order. I'm going to show you again on this, or I'm going to upload it so that you can see how it will be behind this one but above this one. And I hope that you can see that in the video. 
So you can see that the little green E is behind timer zero, but in front of timer one. And you also notice that it goes in the direction where the one is. So I can go at an angle too. But one of our goals would be to make it so it doesn't go beyond the red line. And we're going to do that in the timer also. So for our first example, we're going to have it wrap around. So if it goes all the way to the left, it's going to reappear here over on the right. If it goes all the way up, it'll reappear at the bottom. And we're going to do this by looking at the Y. And if Y is less than 11, if it hits up here, we're going to make it equal to 239. If it's greater than 239, we're going to make it less, or we're going to make it equal to 11. And we're going to do the same thing. If it hits this, we're going to make it equal to this value. And if it goes to the right, we'll make it equal to that value. And for fun, I'll make it go at an angle. Oh, I got to start the timer. And you can see it does what we thought it would do. Now the next thing we'll do is, is it moves very slow, and that's why I added these timer buttons. And so I have the timer set to go every 50 milliseconds, and I have all of the timers set to go every 50 milliseconds. And you'll also notice that they're all not enabled, because that's what these buttons do, they enable the timer. So if you want to do something more often than every 50 milliseconds, you can just copy all. I'm going to control A and select it all. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to this other timer button. And I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to go to the third timer button and I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to go to the fourth timer button. And I'm going to paste it. So now you would think it would run every 12 and a half microseconds in, in a way. But what happens is, and it does do that, but what happens is when you start the second timer, it runs at 25 milliseconds, so it gets about twice as fast. But after that, it doesn't get twice as fast every time. And you'll see that in the, in the video, but it's, it's pretty interesting. So I'm gonna turn on one of the timers and I'm gonna get it going. And you'll see it's about the same as it was. And now when I add the second timer, it goes faster faster but this last one it is a little faster but it's not all that noticeable seems like three really makes it jump but now it's quite a bit quicker and it still does everything that it uh, that it did it just does it a little bit quicker So the next thing we'll do is we'll make it so it hits the sides and stops. And for this, we still look at that value of y every time we go through here. But if it's less than 11, we're going to make it 11. If it's greater than 239, we're going to make it 239. So when it hits that side, when it comes over here, it's 239, it just holds it there. It hits 240, it goes back to 239. And you'd think you might get a little jitter, but you'll see that you don't. It's pretty smooth. And then, of course, we do the same thing on the x. If x is less than 121, we'll make it 121. If x is greater than 449, we make it 449. So to speed it up, I'll turn on all the timers. And then we'll move it over. Oh, you can see, I'm going to leave this in because I didn't copy it across all the timers. So as long as one timer will allow it to pass through. So on this code for timer zero, I need to control A, copy it all. And then I need to go to this timer and paste it in there. And then I need to go to this timer and this timer. And now upload it. The editor is going to ding me for that one. 
Now I'm back over here. Turn all the timers on. And hope it works. And you can see it's working. It should hit the bottom here and then go and stop. So that's just a little video on how do you can double up some timers. I thought that was kind of interesting. The pre and post initialization over here, it was nice to see something that worked in one that didn't work in the other. I'd never had that happen before. And then the, the fact that you can change these ID numbers by using this up and down here is kind of nice. That could come in handy for other projects, not so much this project, but other projects it could. And then this is the beginnings of it. This could be a game, probably. You could use this to make some sort of game system for the next gen. I don't know if it quite has the power of what you'd want, but some simple games would be fun. I've seen people do it in the Facebook page. And then as far as an update to the animation project, I don't know if anyone cares about that or not. I was trying to get a, a GIF or an animated GIF to be able to go right into a next gen display and I can't figure it out. I did find TJC makes the next gen displays. And I did find one that allows me to do it in their IDE, but not in the next gen IDE. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to get a whole new IDE. And it is in Chinese, even though the unofficial next gen page, they have a little users group. They have code that allows you to turn it into English if you want. But it seems like a step too far for anything I've done. And I, I just don't think I want to go in that direction. So it appears that as far as that goes, it is a failure. And if anyone has figured out how to do it in this in this IDE, uh, let me know. and I'd be interested. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.